Good morning. I am Dr. Andrews, Professor of Medicine and Principal P. Gedas Institute of Medical Sciences. Today I am going to discuss with you basics of jugular venous pressure and pulsations. How will you examine jugular venous pulsation? The ideal position of the patient should be at 45 degrees. So you can see the positioning of the patient should be at 45 degrees. Just like any cardiac examination, better thing is 45 degrees. But if the patient's JVP is visible in the sitting position, whichever position, whichever position JVP is seen, we can utilize. So this should be kept in mind. For example, if the JVP is visible in the sitting position, there is no need to make the patient lie down and examine. Hope this point is clear to you. Second important point, how to identify the venous pulsations from arterial pulsations. Sometimes it may be difficult. So let us see, how will you differentiate an arterial pulsation from venous pulsation? Here you can see in the neck there are pulsations are seen. How will you identify whether it is arterial or venous? The first point to be kept in mind is the venous pulsation is sinus in nature. It is sinus in nature. What do you mean by sinus? It has got more than one wave. So the JVP has got not a single pulsation. It has got more than one wave. Second point, it has got a definite upper level. Definite upper level. For example, the JVP is elevated. You can see the it has got a upper level as in this picture you can see that the, the JVP has got an upper level pulsation of which up to a particular point so that is the second point to be kept third point to be remembered is JVP usually collapses inwards it collapses in inwards because arterial pulsations, you know, arterial pulsations are expansive, venous pulsations are collapsing down. That is the third point to be kept in mind. Fourth point you should keep in mind, the JVP changes with the respiration. That is when the, you are taking a deep breath, the, neg the negative intrathoracic pressure increases and blood is being sucked in. And this will produce changes in the waveforms. And also if you press on the abdomen, the abdominal jugular reflex so JVP changes with the various maneuvers so what are the major differences one it is sinus in nature so, definite upper level it collapses inwards and changes with the respiration and other maneuvers and another important point to be remembered is JVP is better seen better seen than felt and it can be obliterated because the pressure changes are occurring from the right atrium so if you press over the root of the neck the JVP can be obliterated so JVP can be obliterated these are the major points to differentiate arterial pulsations from venous pulsations hope this point is clear next we look into how to examine how to measure the JVP. The ideal position we have mentioned, then you have to use two scales. One from the sternal angle. Sternal angle is taken as the reference point. And second is you identify the height of the JVP. Keep another scale horizontally. Identify the vertical distance. This is the JVP that you have to measure. Why you are using the sternal angle as the reference point? It is because the sternal angle has got a constant relationship with the center of the right atrium. Whatever be the position of the patient, the center of the right atrium is approximately 5 cm from the sternal angle. So if the JVP is elevated 3 cm from the sternal angle, the total vertical distance will be approximately 5 plus 3, that is 8 cm. That is the normal jugular 
penis pressure. Suppose the JVP is visible in the sitting position, you can measure the vertical distance from the sternal angle, and that is a okay. And where will you look for the jugular? Here you can see the sternomastoid, and this is underneath is the Indian jugular vein. It is here you look for the jugular venous pulsations. Now the question comes: Why you are taking the Indian jugular vein? Why can't you take the external jugular vein? Why are you selecting the right side? So now we look into the anatomy. So the jugular venous pressure and pulsations are the changes that is happening in the right atrium. You draw the heart like this, and this is the atrium. This is the AB walls. The actually, what you are seeing in the internal in jugular vein is the pressure changes that is occurring in the right atrium. Here you can see that this is the superior vena cava that is draining in the right atrium. Superior vena cava is formed by joining of the brachiocephalic. And on the right side, you can see this is the right intermedular vein joining the subclavian vein. To the subclavian vein, here comes the X. This is the external jugular vein. All of you be familiar with this picture. It's very important. So here you can see that the right internal jugular vein is almost in continuity with the superior vena cava. And that is why you are selecting the right internal jugular for. Hope you are, this point is clear. The right internal jugular vein is in almost continuous vertically situated. That is why you are using the right internal jugular vein. Why can't you use the external jugular vein? Again, look at the picture. The external jugular vein goes through various facial planes. That is, external jugular vein is passing through various facial planes and then joins the subclavian vein. It is not in direct continuity. Second, it is so as it is passing through different planes, it can be easily compressed. Second, it has got a wild surface. Because of these two reasons, external jugular vein is not routinely used for identifying the jugular vein pressure. Now we look and go into the details of the waveforms. In this session, we have discussed about the method of examination of jugular venous pressure and pulsations. Why internal jugular vein is selected rather than the external jugular vein? and why the right side is better. In the following sessions, we will be discussing the waveforms and its relation with the cardiac cycle including the electrocardiogram and various abnormalities of the jugular venous pulsations and pressure.